<laughs> Hello everyone. This is scary. Oh, to be live on the internet. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this session of um, just uh, talking while doing a puzzle. I don't know if this is going to be interesting, but I thought it would be fun. So let's do it. Um, the main reason, well, let me set this so we can see the table. <laughs> By the way, can everybody hear me okay? So, the reason why I wanted to go online is because I have been to AU London this week. If you don't know what AU London is, it is uh, called Autodesk University, which is um, an event organized by Autodesk all around the world. So, this time it was in London. And um, even though it's organized for Autodesk, it's not like a marketing event or well, of course it is in some way, but also it's just a big industry meetup where people do presentations and like companies present their work and it's just to exchange ideas and get to know each other, get to know the latest research that maybe a different in the, um, institute is doing. So I thought in the a sense of sharing, I would now also maybe share with you uh, what I learned at AU if you didn't have the possibility to go and um, be at the event yourself. So that we can all grow and learn together. And to make this more interesting for myself, I thought I would do a puzzle. <laughs> and um, because I've been getting into puzzles lately. I don't know, it's a weird hobby, but it's kind of relaxing. And I'm writing my master's thesis at the moment, so it's nice to kind of zone out a little bit and just do a puzzle. And the puzzle I'm doing now is um, a world map with all the flags. I've heard that in puzzles you're not supposed to look at the cover, but since I am a beginner, maybe I'm a lot to do a few peeps. <laughs> so, um, so, and yeah, if throughout this live stream you have any questions about the event or anything else, I'm going to be reading the comments as well, and uh, then I'll, I can answer your questions. So, first, let's two. Okay, can you see it? You can't see the table, can you? Mm -hmm. How can I make this better? Mm. Wait, I'll be back in a second. I don't know. Maybe the puzzle will be more for my own enjoyment and you're just gonna have to enjoy my <laughs> stories. Um, so, yeah, I went to AU London. It is a two-day event, but there are also some pre-events because like, um, so many people 
uh, are making their journey to come to this kind of industry meetup, then it's also a good opportunity for other organizations to do events and do like networking and whatever. So on Monday, so I arrived on Saturday, I was staying with my friend in London um, and we spent the weekend together and then on Monday the, I went to the Connect and Construct Summit which is um, another networking event and then also a little bit to the Dynamo Day which is um, a, organized by the Dynamo User Group in UK um, which is just a meetup for um, people in the UK who use Dynamo essentially, so they share their um, latest work and talk about the problems that they might be having and like the experience they gained. Ooh. What is this? Oh, I'm back. Was I? Was I gone? I don't know if the screen turned black. Um, anyway, so yeah, um, Dynamo Day and the Connect and Construct Summit um, were two of the events that I went on Monday. And then Tuesday, the AU London started, where this year I also presented my first class that I was very happy about and very excited about. So. The way this works is you can um, apply to give a, a class like a few months before AU. You can turn in your an essay and it says uh, what you would like to present. And then if the topic is decided to be interesting enough, then uh, you will get the opportunity to present at AU, which is also very cool. So. Um, because then you can get you can you get the ticket for free and you get to meet interesting people and can network and share your work and then maybe people will find it interesting. And uh, so I noticed that there weren't a lot of beginners classes at AU last year. So I turned in a hands-on class so that is basically where people are actually sitting in front of computers and you show them something and they try to uh, to do it as well like a proper like live tutorial and um, so I, I turned in a beginners class for Revit so it was essentially really a basic Revit tutorial like we started from scratch to like I was showing them how to draw walls and we're just having fun together um building a little house together and i gave everybody because i thought like these conferences are always very serious and dry so i thought why not give the people the opportunity to have some fun and uh, get creative so i um i we i gave like i said them i will show you how you can do it but what you actually model is up to you and I encourage you to get creative. So we we draw this little um, gold yoga cafe. I don't know if you know about this trend that's been going viral to do yoga, but with goats, like with little cute baby goats jumping on top of you. So I thought what what's more millennial than to model a gold yoga cafe and um, with like a cool working area and, so, and people actually really embraced it and modeled all different kinds of buildings and really got creative. I was very surprised by how engaged people were. And I like, I hope they took something from it and actually um, learned a bit about the basics of Revit while having fun. <laughs> um, so, um yes but i wanted to talk more about what i actually learned in 
It's a very orange live stream, isn't it? <laughs> this is uh, Juice, by the way. So the last time I did a live stream, it was called Architecture and Wine with the with um, Show It Better, uh, the, the other YouTube channel. I don't know if you know him. It's still online, so if you haven't seen it, uh, you can watch it. But uh, today I'm actually not drinking wine. This is Juice. <laughs> I felt like when I was in London, I um, and like seeing my my old friend from high school, we we went out a bit, and um, she took me to this bottomless brunch thing where you can get like limitless prosecco, and um, so I think uh, I drank enough there, so I need to drink a little bit of juice at the moment. This is. Blood orange juice. I don't know what's the English word for it. I bet it's not blood orange. I bet this is a very German way of describing fruit. I don't know. It's like, and it's not a grapefruit. It's not an orange. It's something in between. Anyway, back to AU. So I have this little notebook with me. I don't know if you, you do this, but I really enjoy um taking notes physically but also uh like making these little like um i don't know these little funny graphics and to just because when you're like because i was excited about going so before i went uh, i would, would write down like everywhere that i need to go and the events that I had and where they were located in the city. I don't know, maybe it's childish and like a to-do list. Um, I do this for my master's thesis as well. <laughs> Just today, my my um, and my what is that called? My mentor for my master's thesis asked me if I'm uh, procrastinating because. <laughs> This is like something, uh, some of my notes for my master's thesis, and he made fun of me for the way that I do these titles. But I don't know, it just kind of motivates me, motivates me if it's all pretty, and then I, it's more easier for me to, like, I can tell my, like, I kind of convince myself that it's fun just because it's colorful. <laughs> um, so, the lectures that I went, I myself went to at AU, and where most of them were really interesting. But funny enough, the ones that I liked best were the ones that were not very BIM technical or like construction technical, um, but some that were really off topic. So the one that I liked most actually was called um, "People's Pro like Practical Help with People's Problems When Implementing New Software. So it was basically about, by the way, it was by Adam Carter from the Bristol College. Um, but so it was basically about how you can motivate people in your company or in your institution to adapt to a new technology. So I think everybody who's interested in BIM and works somewhere where there's still very traditional practices and technologies at hand that um, it's really hard to convince people to change the way and to change like to change the way they work and to change the technology they use and not to feel overwhelmed by by the by the change right and so he spoke about how you can make it easier for people to transition to something new that they that is unknown for them. And yeah, this was something I would like to share with you because I found it very interesting and, and very refreshing to talk about something so practical and um, yeah, sometimes these conferences get so because we are essentially all nerds in a way, and we we all are very um, 
of course convinced by the things we do, but we cannot forget that we also have to drag along the, the other people, not drag along, but to also convince the other people. And it's not like, what is your invention or what is the work you're doing worth if nobody uses it or if nobody's interested in it, right? You can have the smartest, the smartest idea in the world, but if nobody cares, then it's not going to make its way anywhere. So, yes. <laughs> Wait, let me have a sip. <laughs> oh, Milos, the, the Balkan architect, was listening. He let me down. He, uh, we were supposed to do the Go Yoga presentation together, but he, um, well, I mean, it, it wasn't his fault he had exams, but um, that made me extra nervous that I did, but because we gave our talk, the, the, our class, we gave it the name, Everything You Need to Know About Revit in 90 Minutes. And then to have the, the weight of this ambitious title to, on my shoulders, uh, just on my own without him, that like gave me um, a bit of pressure because I like I was like how am I gonna make people happy if they come to this class and with the expectation of learning everything about Revit in just this one one presentation this one like tutorial but uh, but yeah I mean I like I survived um. So, back to the people's problems. So what he said, the first thing he said was that people actually like change. What people don't like is being changed. So when they feel that somebody else changed something for them and not they themselves decided to change something. So, and the example that he gave was actually quite funny. So. When you're single and then you meet somebody and you fall in love and you decide to to go into a relationship with that person, that is also that changes your life, doesn't it? It changes your situation. You suddenly have a, a new person in your life. But this is but this you don't mind this kind of change because you yourself decided that you wanted to have this change and something you agreed on and something you're happy with so even though this is a massive change it doesn't feel that scary it might, like a new relationship can feel scary but and you get the point um but then on um, the other hand if you marry somebody and then after 10 years this person suddenly decides that she won't say as she wants to divorce you she or he um then this also changes uh, your life and like everything, but uh, you didn't decide it, and this is why you don't like it because you are being changed instead of bringing the change yourself. And so this is something to keep in mind that always you should try to involve the other people in the change process and not just um, deciding and everything yourself and how it should be implemented and everything. Also, so a good question um, to ask always would be like, do you have a good idea about how we could do this? Because also he said it would be very arrogant to assume that nobody apart from yourself has a good idea, which is of course also true. So if you, decide you want to innovate and do something new in your company, you should always also ask the people around you before you um, decide something. But then to the more scientific uh, part of his presentation, because he actually got, uh, so for his own purposes, I think he also researched the topic more deeply to a like neuroscientific level and uh, found this theory or this model called SCARF. So SCARF stands for status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness. So SCARF. 
Um, it's just to remember it more easily, but essentially it is um, a model to describe how people get motivated and how their brain works. And so whenever you take one of these five things away from them, it can be a threat. But if you um, give them more of it, it's a reward. It's treated by the, by the brain, it's treated as a reward. So for example, so one of them is F, fairness. So a perceived gain in fairness, actually, um, activates the same reward in people's brains as um, a monetary reward. So for example, if you have this feeling that somebody in like a colleague is always like not doing his work probably, but nobody uh, like, like he's still like the shining star in your office because nobody noticed but you this is really annoying for you because you're working very hard and don't get um, don't get the recognition for it. Then, if that changes, this um, this is perceived like this causes the same happiness to you as if you got a like monetary promotion, which is something I think we can like. like this is very easy to to relate to because uh, we all know how annoying it is if like, if it's in a this can be in a in a group work at university or this can be in in a, in a company but if somebody always um like never does his work right but always gets all the um what's it called uh uh, like reward, like uh, compliments, then uh, then you you get annoyed by that. So wait, let me see if there are. Okay, no questions so far. Um, yes. So that that one is fairness. So like people that have a high level of fairness, they will um, have the tendency to speak up for other people and they want to be involved in decision making and they want everybody to be involved and like everybody that they, they want, even if it's not for themselves, they want other people to be treated fair as well. So and then, but let's start from the beginnings, right? So S Scarf S is for status. So people that have a high status drive um, will um, will be bored when there is no competition for something, or they they have a high perception of the relation they uh, they stand in with others. So they want to be perceived, they want to know exactly if they're above or below somebody else and they, they get, yeah, they're driven by competition. So if, so something that will motivate them to try out a new software would be to, to uh, make it some kind of challenge, right? And um, or like, a, a competition so that they have the feeling that maybe or that they can for example be get like a, a leading position they get into a leading position if they adopt the software very early and then F a C is for certainty so those people um, want to be able to predict their own future they're looking for stability so people that are have a high certainty like level and the high certainty tendency they want they prefer stability so it's not to get these people scared by some something new it's important to always to also show them how um this is not a threat and how this is Needed. So, for example, because I mean, 
in Germany and I think generally in Europe, the construction industry is doing quite well at the moment. So people feel some kind of stability, like certainty in that because they think this might be stable, but and then don't see the reason to innovate or to change something about their their structures because this might this is a, brings about some level of uncertainty. But actually, like if you look at companies from the past, the ones who succeeded throughout various uh, decades are the ones that constantly innovated, especially when they were doing well. So not to to change your your uh, system is actually more of a threat to your stability than if you were to to innovate and to change. So this is something that people that have a high um, certainty uh, tendency, you have to to show them that there's not a threat and that the company like that is the change is only going to bring a more like or how is the change not going to affect their job and how is it not going to change like threat threaten their job essentially right this is what i'm trying to say okay so c uh, s c a a is for autonomy so people want to have a sense of control um, of what they're doing and to, uh, or like sense of control over themselves and over what they're doing and not be um, controlled like uh, by, by some like puppeteers so um, people that have a high sense of autonomy they want they enjoy choices so and they will likely say no to ideas that aren't theirs so um yeah so this uh, like brings me back to the beginning where i said that they um that it's it's good to get people involved and to ask them questions and uh, like give them choices and not have everything decided before uh, before they know about it because people I mean this is all common sense right now when someone like when when I was sitting in this in this presentation I was thinking that like of course it all makes sense but it's nice to have it um like presented to you in this comprehensive way, right? With these exact tips. And then R, the last one is relatedness. So it is that people have the tendency to, they want to feel part of something greater and to be like on this on the same team as other people. So they um, they like they want to relate essentially. They want to feel a part. So again like they want to be included in the decision making so all these five points status certainty autonomy relatedness fairness they are to be kept in mind when you want to bring about a, a change in your institution or in your um company or in your team or in your family where it's so people like to have choices they don't want to even if you have already made up your mind it's maybe nicer to give people a choice so for example if you decide you want to uh, start using BIM uh, like you've been using CAD software so far and now you want to switch to a 3D modeling software and you want to do a BIM project, then maybe don't uh, decide for one software just yet, and maybe give people the choices and give them the possibility to try out like Revit, uh, Vectorworks, Alplan, uh, Archicad, and all these softwares, and 
don't have uh, and take their opinion because in the end uh, you're not the only one that's going to use the software and somebody else might have interesting insights on it and then also keep in mind to treat people fairly about it and um, to not exclude some people from it like to have a closed group uh, like a, a certain group that decides everything and people get the feeling that it's done behind closed doors um and yeah and then about the status thing is maybe it's nice also to introduce a little bit of competition to it so that what he's also said is that if you for example lo lower one of these five things then keep in mind to um, also improve one or two other things because actually if you increase two of these five uh, fields then it is the effect is not like one plus one but see it's more than two it's the if you combine two of them the the increase in happiness in the in the group is increased more than if you um if you increase one and or increase the other and add this but uh, it's actually a little bit more because it's um because like it's combined it's perceived as even better um yeah so that was that talk very interesting adam carter he was called from the Bristol College. So thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with me so that I could now share it with other people. <laughs> okay, let me look at the, the comments and if everybody, anybody has asked something interesting. Okay, now everybody's just saying hi. Hi to Brazil, Mexico, Tahiti, Spain, wow, that's so cool. I didn't think that um, so many people <laughs> would watch this. I also, I don't know, do people still do live streams even? I feel like I'm three years late to this. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, glad um, that you're here and hanging out with me. <laughs> Oh, um, so, so I haven't really gotten anywhere with my puzzle, have I? Maybe I should start. So maybe I shouldn't have poured it out all on the table. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> so maybe this wasn't the, the smartest start for it. I'm going to start sorting out the corner pieces now. It is a big puzzle, isn't it? Do you like puzzling? Write it in the chat. <laughs> because um, I actually have never puzzled before. And then my brother got from his friend as a birthday present a puzzle of the um london tube map and um, then which is a very complicating puzzle because you have a lot of only white pieces and then but then one evening i uh, was bored so I started it and I actually really enjoyed it, even though it was driving me insane with all, because this was so difficult with all the white pieces. It's literally insolvable. At some point, uh, my other brother came in and that was, because it's weird, like I, I, it was hard, but also I couldn't stop it because I wanted, maybe I am status driven. I saw that the challenge I couldn't stop because I wanted to solve this puzzle, even though it was so hard. So, um, so at some point where I was like 
two hours in, my youngest brother came into the room and I was like, please, just burn the whole thing. Because <laughs> um, to save me, just to save me from my misery, misery, really. But yeah, then he keeps telling <laughs> So my little brother is a bit insane, but he, he actually came in with a blowtorch, is that what you call it? Like a, like a big lighter and <laughs> started to, to, uh, to try and set the, the puzzle on fire, but it didn't, it didn't catch fire. And it was obviously just, just a joke, but then I had to continue puzzling it. But then um, now I decided to maybe do an easier puzzle so if you haven't been here from the beginning this is the puzzle that i'm doing with all like with a world map and then all these flags in the side because i thought i might learn about the flags of a country um while do of, like all the countries that are in the world um, and maybe see some interesting flags that i did not know about before like, what can I show you? Mm. <laughs> I don't really have anything completed yet, but I'm really excited to find out what this flag here is, for example. Uh, it has like a, a little dragon on it. If you want to be really smart, you can now type into the chat what, uh, what country this is. Okay. But back to um, Aldous University. So if you've just tuned in, welcome. And um, I am doing a puzzle and talking about the conference that I went to this week in London that was called Aldous University, which is an industry meetup organized by Autodesk. It's not a a sales event probably i mean indirectly it is but well it's more like it's just an industry meetup where people share their work and do presentations and give classes on actually just share the knowledge basically and uh, you can network there's like, of course, there's this big party in the evening, but also it's overall, it's just very interesting. And um, you learn a lot. And I thought I would share some of the things that I've learned with um, you if you didn't have the possibility to go yourself. So um, what I've talked about earlier is a class that I went to that was on how to how to motivate people for change and how to um, like when you bring about new want to bring about new software in your company or in your institution how you can um, just deal with the people's problems really how to because people don't like being changed and they don't like um, instability so how can you uh, help them get um, more at ease with um, the change but also I thought I would share maybe with you what was because also you at these conferences you also always get a bit of free stuff and I thought maybe that I would actually give my, because you always get these um, backpacks, and I thought that I would actually might do a giveaway with my bag with and all the goodies that are in there because I don't actually need a like bag like this. So maybe somebody else would be happy about it. I think it's a uh, it's a good quality uh, bag, so you can actually use it for university. It uh, has these bottle holders at the side. So maybe if that is 
something you would be interested in, then I will do a giveaway for that. But first, let me show you what's inside. So one is a notebook. I actually um, like that they're giving away these very plain notebooks. It just says Autodesk in the bottom. But apart from that, it's not. So you can actually use it because you don't want to run around like an Autodesk salesperson. So this is what's in there. And then, of course, uh, a. So this is the floor plan that you don't need. So um, a pen that was before. Then what else have I got? <laughs> this is just some squishy toy that is very in tone with my um, aesthetic. Oh, my juice is almost empty. Um, then this is my badge that I wore at the event. It says exactly that bit student and blogger from Germany. <laughs> okay, um, what else do we have? This is some rubbish. Oh, this is like a, a pop socket that you can, you know, these things that you can put on your phone to, and then you can them out so to make your phone stand up. And Yeah, just, ah, yeah, this is another batch, and then this other bag. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to have any of this, then uh, you can write me and I'll do it. Or maybe I'll, I'll set up a challenge, I don't know yet. Um, oh, but I forgot the most exciting thing which is this very cool mini drone that they put in there. Um, I didn't know you could give away something like this. I think it's really exciting. So this is what it looks like. And uh, it makes, it lights up when you turn it on. And it's actually very hard to like indoors but I'm still <laughs> if you if you've been following my channel for um a while then you might know that I did a live stream before with a drone and I almost not only cut myself but then also like um two minutes later I also almost flew the drone into a wall and uh, so let's hope that this uh, it goes better. <laughs> oh, oh no. Wait, let me get it back. I um, fly it indoors. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, this was also a giveaway. Really cool. Enjoyed it. Yeah, very much. So if I ever release merch or something, I think this is something that I would definitely um, sell. Okay. Um, I mean, does anybody have any other questions about AUM? I mean, what else did I did I learn? So, um, I mean, I went to a very um, nice presentation also about generative design that was um, Essentially, they are building, so it wasn't about refinery. It's actually, it was from a different company that tries to build 
a more comprehensive tool for um, for generative design and actually for oh, how do you say that for to optimize the so when you when you want to build a a building you have, need to get it like approved by um if you have a certain site and you want to build something on it you have to get it approved by the local authorities and um these studies that they then do to find out if your building meets all the standards and whatnot and uh, that can take up to uh, like very long up to a, a few months so they're trying to find a way of how to optimize the this process and to to uh, make it much faster to validate your design by the way uh, essentially so that was very cool um i can share a link to their project in the description and uh, i think maybe so how long have i been doing this maybe it's a good point also to end the live stream here i'm, I'm not uh, getting anywhere with this <laughs> puzzle um this but um, then again i mean uh, i'm not a puzzling channel but maybe hmm, change of careers no <laughs> no i think this will remain a hobby and let's just see if oh somebody asked how Dieter was in his dj skills very good enjoyed it very much um the only problem was that most people were standing outside um but he was djing inside but they still like the box like the speakers were outside as well so they uh, heard the music just as well but Dita couldn't relate to his audience, so I was a bit like um, I felt a bit sad for him. But I think he he enjoyed himself um, also just by um, be, like being in his zone and DJing. So fav favorite presenter, and uh, somebody asked. So as I mentioned before, I actually very much enjoyed the presentation by. Adam Carter from the Bristol College because I thought it was very well researched, very informative. Um, also, he had a funny way of presenting it. It was very nice to listen to him. And um, then I also, of course, enjoyed the keynote and I enjoyed the two presentations that I was at the Connect and Construct Summit as well and um, there were more sort of workshop types which is really cool because we got to work in in groups and um develop ideas and it was about that when you um that how important it is in a company to also keep track of what you're doing and to find indicators for what you're doing so for example what they showed was that it was a company that was not happy with their customer satisfaction because they were getting bad reviews from their customers. So um, they were essentially building houses for private people. So you would think that there is, if your customers are unhappy, then you need to, for example, um, reduce the amount of errors that your building has when you like deliver it to the customer like when you hand over the key to your customers but uh, what they found out is that there was actually no correlation between the satisfaction of the customer and the amount of um, faults that were in the finished building and then they also looked at the 
relation between the satisfaction of the customer and the amount of days it took to, fit, uh, to fix all these errors. And also, again, there was no correlation because you would think that um, if you just bought a house and you just had a house built, that as a like private customer, then you would want, if you like spend all your life savings on this house, then you would want it to be delivered without errors. Or if there are errors, then you would, would want them to be fixed right away. But actually they found that it doesn't make a difference if um, it took them five days or 30 days to, um, to, to, to um, fix those errors. But then what they looked into was the relation between the amount of emails sent and the customer satisfaction. And then there was like a, a straight like a correl correlation. Uh, so what they took from this was that um, the communication that you have with your customer is what actually matters. So apparently um, the people did not care if there was if there were many mistakes in the building as long as they were informed about it and as long as they were informed about when they were going to be fixed. Like if there was a like a problem with getting a like the right windows and they needed to wait for two weeks before they could be exchanged. And this was fine as long as the people like as long as you were informed about why it is taking so long. So that was very interesting, I thought, because it wasn't what you would naturally think if you're if like your customers are unhappy, you you would think that you need to improve on the work that you're doing. But in this case, this actually there was a much simpler solution to this, which is to um, tell your employees to communicate better with their customers and to let them know about what is happening. And so um, I, so this is what we learned in this, in this workshop, then in a group where we all had a different topic and then we were supposed to find mistakes that could happen there and then indicators on how you could measure them. And then in the second session, in the second workshop, I learned that there, um, that there are leading and lagging indicators. So for example, a um, leading, a lagging um, indicator in this case would be the customer to like the customer satisfaction. So the feedback you get from the customer, like say we have like a Yelp review, like a five star Yelp review. This is actually a lagging um, indicator because you only can measure it once it happened. So it comes after there has been a, like an incident or an, an accident, like something has happened and then uh, the customer satisfaction goes down and then they write a bad review. So if you look at the Yelp reviews of your business, then this is a lagging indicator of the customer satisfaction because it only appears after something has happened. Whereas in the, ca in the um, ca case that I talked about before, you, the, you have, the amount of email sent would be a leading indicator because if you notice that in a project there is um, not many, uh, not a lot of communication between the customer and your employ employee, then uh, this is an indicator for a future customer like um, unhappiness in the customer. Do you get what I mean? So this indicates something before it happens. So if you see that, you can. Um, you you know you can predict the insatisfaction of the customer before it happens and then change something about it. It's like a, a warning indicator, where as the the lagging indicators um, happen, like only occur once something happens. So what you need to try to do is for your problems that you might have in your company to find leading indicators. So to to um, like prevent mistakes from happening. This is what I was trying to say. <laughs> okay. 
And let me see if there are other questions before I finish off this live stream. Um, so private presenter, uh, how big is A London? And um, so it is getting bigger and bigger, actually, I heard. So this year there were 2,000 people attending. And actually, they plan on next year even more people coming so that and they are going to have to find, so they already have, but they're going to find a new venue for this. Like they're going to move it to a different venue because the tobacco dog where it has been happening for the past years is getting too small. So that's actually cool. Also, um, wait, let me get the exact numbers. And somebody said that there has actually been a $3 billion investment in uh, the construction industry last year. I heard, yeah, $3.2 billion investment in construction innovation, just in the innovation part of construction last year, which is a 324% growth compared to 2017. So I think so when I heard this, I thought, what an exciting time to uh, graduate, because it seems like there's so much happening in the industry. So this is really cool. Um, no, there's no BIM software for solving puzzles. <laughs> um, I think I have to, to solve that uh, offline then. Um, Who are some of your mentors and people you follow so I can keep up with every um, changing field of BIM? So let me think of that. So, okay, so one, so on YouTube, I mean, um, there are two channels that I know about that are really interesting. Oh, no, I mean, there are many. I don't want to say something now um, because I'll forget somebody, but about like news in the construction industry i think the one channel that really stands out is the b1m so if you it's it writes out like bim but the i is a is a number one uh, they make really really great content about the construction industry as a whole and about all the innovation that is taking place there so this is always very interesting they also are starting now to to release these um, these movie-like types of videos, which is uh, really cool. So this is something to to follow. And then um, concerning BIM, just look at who I follow on Twitter. I would recommend, and then uh, also follow them. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, and then once you you've started following a bunch of people, then you will always um, the algorithm kicks in, and then you will get recommendations of uh, what else might be interesting for you. So this is how I do it, and how I do it on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, okay. So I think we'll. Um, Finish it. We'll uh, yeah. We'll finish it here, and I hope wherever you are, you are having a nice Friday evening or Friday night. Um, and then I guess I see you in my next video. <laughs> okay. Bye bye.